You're listening to Creating a Universe, a Love Anarchy podcast hosted by William J. Rogers. On this show, we follow the journey of creatives, artists, and entrepreneurs who are making a name for themselves in the ever-evolving landscape of today's industry. Featuring an insight into both Love Anarchy and the Labanaverse music universe, as well as the individual projects and stories of each of our guests from the music industry and beyond. So whether you're a budding creative or simply interested in what goes on behind the scenes, this is the podcast for you. Hello and welcome to Creating a Universe. I'm your host, William J. Rogers. And today I'm here with Charlotte and Matt from the symphonic metal band, Terminal Dusk. How's it going, guys? Going good, how are you? Yeah, going going very well, thank you. Great, great to be here chatting with you guys today. Likewise. Excited, yeah. <laughs> nice, cool. So, you know, I, I, I was just saying to you guys, obviously, for people that listen to this, um, you know, often I'm, I'm speaking to one person. I've done it a couple of times with, uh, with a couple of us, so we'll have to coordinate this slightly. I don't know who might want to start, but uh, would one of you perhaps be able to just kick things off with a bit of an overview of who you are and what you do? I can, I'll start. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Terminal Dusk was kind of founded out of like the, the pandemic, um, kind of out of, out of a fallout of a previous band that I had uh, before um, the pandemic started. It's, it just was like an instrumental project and I ended up working with uh, a singer I found on, on a Facebook page in, in, in Sweden and uh, we were recording and um, it just kind of evolved from there things didn't work out with her and we just um, I just started writing more music and ultimately found Charlotte like a year later. And um, yeah, we just, it's been a slow process, but Terminal Dusk is like finally a live gigging band now where we just shot a video uh, a couple of weeks ago with, with um, Sergio from the band Anaria. He flew out here from New Hampshire and uh, we, um, shot a video for the song Marionette, which is the title track on our new EP that just came out um, mid-June. So mm -hmm. um, things are moving and we're really excited. Awesome. That's fantastic. And so, yeah, Marionette, that's the release that has just come out. Awesome um, that you got the video coming. I saw the little preview uh, and that yes. looks really, really cool. Have you, have you announced when that's going to drop yet? Or maybe that's... Uh... Not still yet. I, yeah. It's okay. still being it's still being edited. We should be mm -hmm. getting like first drafts sometime soon. Hopefully next week. Um, but there's no official date set. We're trying to be like strategic with that release. So because uh, mm -hmm. it looks really beautiful, and we we couldn't be more happy or excited for the release itself. So awesome. Yeah, it looks like it's a fantastic presentation for you guys. Mm -hmm. so I think it will be a real statement piece. Um, the EP is fantastic. Absolutely love the EP. Um, Thank you. Thank three you. tracks. Uh, you know, one of them was a reimagining of John Lennon. That was uh, um, <laughs> imagined. That was uh, yeah. unexpected or unusual. That was pretty cool. Um, so that's a nice thing on there. And you had some releases uh, before that as well. A few singles, right? Mm -hmm. um, Correct. They came out in 2022. So I guess you you started in 20. 20 i assume or said you said coming out that or you you kind of started something in a pandemic that yes yeah this. so the <laughs> the project itself started in the pandemic in like 2020 um but things didn't officially start releasing until uh charlotte and i were done um recording the heart remains and orphan moon um and that was in 2021 i believe mm. right charlotte or was like that, that 2022 <laughs> No, no, I think it was 2022 we started, we, we released our first tracks. Nice. Yeah, because I'm like, if it's officially April 2022. Almost two years now, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, Charlotte, what, what was the process for joining the band like for you? Obviously, we kind of heard Matt's side. Matt kind of got this thing going, basically, and then, and then at some point you guys have come into contact with each other. How did that happen, and how did you end up becoming the singer of this band? <laughs> so, it was kind of funny. Um, I had originally, I had this other project uh, called Loomis that was like a symphonic metal band, but it was more like a Nightwish style, very operatic and, and that kind of thing. And so then through that, I met this other guy and I was writing music with him and his wife and we were starting our own project there, but they were just kind of like, <sighs> unmotivated sounds harsh, but I mean, we worked together for years 
and just never did anything. Mm -hmm. But we have this one song. So I'm a I'm a big nerd, and I really <laughs> like uh, the series Mass Effect and uh, the Legendary Edition. Like the re-release of the trilogy was coming out, and we were going to release a song that was loosely like inspired by that series. So we rented studio time. We found this guy, uh, Andy Green, online, who we really liked. And so we're like, we're going to hire him. So we hired him as our engineer. And we spent quite a few hours like recording all the tracks and everything. This this song never got finished because the, the main writer and guitarist like never recorded his parts. But Andy was like, you know, I have this friend that I think you should meet. <laughs> Cool. so and that that friend happened to be matt nice <laughs> yeah. nice me <laughs> cool uh, nice and then the rest is history from there that make, that makes a lot of sense so i suppose at that point you're already there with some demos or songs that you had with another singer but it wasn't yes really yeah out, so we had the heart remains recorded um and i think orphan moon was being worked on on top of, I think the, the infant version of can't get away. Um, so I had, I had some tracks to like present, um, Charlotte, but I think I'm not speaking for Charlotte, but I think the, the one that sold her was orphan moon. I'm not it totally was. sure, but I, okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. And that I, one I, was, uh, being cool. start. it had started being written. There was a, uh, like a little bit of a melody and there were some placeholder lyrics that, he definitely was like, you know, I just thought these things sounded cool, but they're not like a cohesive thing yet. And he's like, and I, I believe it was a documentary about orphaned moons that he was watching that just kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of inspired that. And um, I'm a huge fan of Star Set, like my teacher at Star Set, and they're very space themed. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my chance to like work on a Star Set song. So. <laughs> I kind of ran with the concept. Uh, some of the lyrics are the original, like visionary lyrics that he had, and then I just took them and and uh, you know, kind of fluffed them out a little bit, if you will, and and mm -hmm. wrote the rest of it. And yeah, I think it turned out really nice. It was our first true collaboration. That's wonderful. true. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, really fantastic. I would love to chat a little bit more about your process. Um, first thing that I want to cover, though, um, just for people that are listening to this that may not have heard you guys before, um, how would you describe your sound overall? I think we're kind of like a marriage between a lot of different influences. I mean, on my end, I'm a really big fan of um, Demi Borgir, like the orchestrations, um, the dark elements of um, like symphonic black metal. Um, I have, I draw a lot of inspiration from that. Um, and I, I'm also very influenced with pop music and stuff. I know that sounds probably cheesy, but I, I try to diversify my musical interests because I, I feel like as a composer, it's really crucial to be well-rounded um, mm -hmm. and not so um, narrow-sighted narrow or narrow-minded with just one particular genre. I like to be influenced by a lot of different things. And... Um, I think a lot of that kind of shines with some of the melodies that I, I come up with as well. And um, yeah, no, I just symphonic metal in general is like my heart beats for that. So that's, mm -hmm. that's probably why I've been doing this for so many years now, writing this kind of genre. It's pretty, it's pretty complicated, but mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, I think we're kind of more, we lean more a little of prog rock. I think with some heavy like metal influences, uh, one of my favorite, favorite bands ever is Camelot. And I feel like we're very similar to them. I mean, I'm not Tommy or Roy by any stretch of the imagination, but I think from a musicality standpoint, we're, we're very similar. And as far as uh, being well-rounded and influences and stuff, like I would say my two favorite bands are like Camelot and the Beatles. So they couldn't be. Right more opposite and that's where the john lennon cover kind of came into into play so yeah yeah it's it's for us it's like every every member of the band has their own particular influence and stuff and it's just it's kind of fun to um work together to get get those different viewpoints and, and everything even though like i consider myself the main composer i still like to have everybody's input and um 
yeah, it's, it's just, it's good to have a wide variety of options out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get you. And I like the, I like that both of you, you know, you said your different things in your own unique way, but you both kind of came to this point of paralleling, you know, kind of epic metal with, you know, more like pop. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, yeah. that's, that's an affinity that you guys have clearly that clicked for you both. Yeah. And as a band. Absolutely. I think, I think it's important, um, you know, like in, in modern music and stuff, I think uh, well, a well-crafted melody really will stick. And um, I, I, we, we really try to create earworm infectious melodies because I, I think mm -hmm. that's really one of the hardest aspects of, of songwriting is to create that. Um, memorable aspect and everything and charlotte does an amazing job with with that and uh i, I couldn't be happier as a a band member or collaborator with that oh i'm i'm a pretty happy collaborator as well <laughs> and, and <laughs> but as far as pop influence if i'm being completely honest i taught myself to sing to mariah carey albums so nice. Yeah, there's there's strong pop influence. That's so. a good education right there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. One of the first uh, talent competitions I ever won was singing Dream Lover. And when before, like I went through puberty and my voice changed and everything, I could actually do the high, uh, like the high G sharp six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, like a whistle type uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, man. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So you guys have both touched base on it about collaboration, and I think we've kind of got a little bit of a gauge of your process. I'd love to um, delve into that a little further. From what I gather sure. so far, like, Matt, you're you're the composer primarily, right? Yes. Um, that's your sort of primary responsibility. You play guitar in the band, but I understand yes. that you're responsible for guitar and arrangements. So I'm, I'm assuming the orchestration and all this kind of this kind of side of things. Pretty much, pretty much everything. Um, I I do. I I I write and record everything in my apartment. Um, mm -hmm. I do the pianos as well. So like sometimes live, um, I, I'll take my digital piano, like the one that you have behind you, mm -hmm. on stage, and we'll do we'll do tracks. And um, I think this next show we're gonna be we're gonna be performing the reimagined song for the first time live which is gonna be really fun um mm. but yeah it's composition is so much easier now than it was 10 years ago just because of the advancements in virtual instruments mm -hmm. and in, in terms of like orchestra i use pretty much primarily um sony scores the orchestra three because it right out of the gate, if you have ideas like for chord progressions or orchestral ideas, it gives you that immediately. And you can further mm -hmm. customize, you know, um, the orchestral arrangement by MIDI. So like, you don't have to rely on what they're giving you as a template. Like you can go and arrange it even further, which is such a powerful tool. Mm. Um, and I, I, I really think that because of that program, the, the music has, become much better and well more orchestrated because of that aspect. Um, and then they're just the realism, you know, mm. of, of instruments these days are insane with piano sampling and bass sampling. If you want to do that, um, guitar modelers, like drums, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, in, it's incredible. I mean, mm. I started writing, um, and composing, I think 12 years ago and the instruments back then, are it, it's 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 incredible to you know to know where how how it's just evolved over time it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of cool absolutely yeah it's, it's amazing i want to continue this but there's something that you said that i've got to rewind to for a moment there about this program that you're using that yes. i don't believe that i'm familiar with so is it it's something that provides you with some kind of orchestration yes yes um so like um, the orchestra three is a, a deeply powerful arranger tool for orchestra. And it gives wow. you a lot of different like drag and drop templates. Like if you have a four chord progression, there's arpeggiation, there's different modulation that it provides, but, um, wow. you can also drag and drop that recorded MIDI back into your, your DAW and, um, arrange the notes however you want. So you don't have to rely exactly on that particular, like 
arpeggiation or melody or brass um, progression. Like you can do a lot. I mean, it's it's essentially yeah, right. infinite. Um, they Sony score, I, I believe, are top tier, and that's mm. just my opinion. I might be a little bit biased because I've been using them, but um, it, well, it's it's, <laughs> it's such a great product. Yeah, it is. It is such a great product. It's worth the money if you're in this genre or if you're doing trailer music or um, mm. any kind of orchestration, at least for um, playback. It's it's great to have that. Um, obviously mm. a real orchestra would be like the best, <laughs> but we don't have that kind of money yet. Yeah. 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 Yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Just on tap. Just like they hang yeah. out back there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Ready to go. I don't have, a, I don't have the, 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 the Prague symphony orchestra on retainer, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, hopefully, hopefully one day. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's, that's really interesting. That, that sounds cool. Cause I mean, I use a lot of the orchestral VSTs myself mm-hmm. um, and I compose orchestra and I love everything about it. Just as, as you say, you know, the, the fact that we have such amazing virtual instruments, but I've never used one that will like, I'm, I'm always going in blank, you know, like I can play on the keyboard yeah. or I can start plugging in MIDI, MIDI myself, you know, but yes. to have it already do that and then be like, I want arpeggios here, click. You know, that's, yeah, that's quite, uh, quite something. Yeah, no, it's, 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 I, I can give you a link to the website. I'll definitely um, check it so you out. You can check yeah. it out. I think I, it, it'll revolutionize, I think, a lot of how you approach composition, um, mm. if not just give you inspiration, um, because it's, it's, it, there's so much contained within this program that, um, the inspiration is pretty limitless, I think, at least from my perspective. And I'm doing this like every day. See, I, I find it, I find it really cool because um, it seems to me to be an, an interesting bridge here and I don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole. <laughs> like I kind of think that, as you say, this technology has developed a lot and I feel like the next place for it to go, like it's all pretty much, well, you could say near or even perfect in terms of like guitar simulators some of the plugins and stuff sound incredible, man. And they're getting used on top, top records. So mm-hmm. that's pretty much already there. Maybe it can get a bit better, but it's pretty much there. I feel like the next step with all the AI technology that's coming out is mm-hmm. that we will be doing this a lot more, it, more like it will actually kind of, we tell it what we want and it will kind of do it. And then we can just yeah. tell it how we want to edit it. <laughs> and none of us will have to play any instruments. <laughs> I, I think that's, that's, I mean, this is total rabbit hole conversation. It is, it is. Um, yeah. Because like as a, <laughs> as a composer, like I think about these things and like how things can be easier. And like, just to give you like an analogy of like AI and how AI could help composition. Um, AI could be a tool. Like if you're doing like a, like a solo violin run, these like, which are, it's a very lyrical, very vocal instrument. And it, you know, all these articulations need to be perfect to be real. Mm. Um, based on if you could use AI based on just like the velocities and note length and all the different things you can program, like if it knew what you were probably trying to do, like it could, yeah, it could compose it that way. Yeah, um, yeah. instead of, you know, adding, all these different, you know, um, modulation or expression wheels, like it, it could get you there quicker. I think that could be a, a, a powerful tool, at least for realism. You're already mm-hmm. composing the melody. It's just helping you, Makes you know, it sound like a with real the articulations. Yes. Violinist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, man. That's just one thing that immediately would improve any, any product. Um, as I said, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> go down too much <laughs> of a rabbit hole right now with it, but I definitely think that you're kind of, maybe a little ahead of the curve um, with the way that you're approaching the orchestration, just by the fact that you're using this tool that really gives you something off the bat that you then kind of mold (laughs) rather than going in from scratch the whole way. So yeah. Yep. Because I was doing exactly what you were doing, um, Mm -hmm. you know, a number of years ago, plugging in, you know, a singular note at a time. And um, you can learn a lot from that, but just as a time saver, you know, and it, it really helps having things assist you, you know? And final question about that, just cause I'm so curious sure. <laughs> is, um, are you, is it like all on one track? Is it one plugin that's doing like a whole orchestra or you're having tracks for sections or for every single instrument mm-hmm. or, or what? Depends on how you, how, it depends on how you approach composition. Like, um, for, for, um, layered, layered orchestral 
samples. Um, cause like the, uh, the internal mixing board is, uh, it has five different instruments and it's, it varies on, on the template and the, um, uh, preset or whatever. Um, but you can basically just, let's say you just have a four chord progression. You lay that down on your, on your main and MIDI track. And it basically animates the orchestra, uh, based on your mod wheel. So like the intensity wow. and the, the, the amount of, uh, effects and arpeggiation are dictated by, uh, wow. the mod wheel. So like, obviously like the lowest velocity, it'll be more, you know, soft. And then the higher, you know, you push it, then it becomes more of an intense, orchestra you know just wow. uh that's how it's built and it's it's really brilliant on how it does that and you can record that in real time um and then drag and drop that midi from the program back into your daw and it separates it by channel so then you'll have like if you have like arpeggiated violins one and two viola celli and bass like it'll have all of that recorded midi data that you can further go in and arrange right. however you want each one Wow, yep. that is so cool. Okay, cool. Um, I've spoken to a bunch of people that that like composers, people that use um, orchestral VSTs. I never heard anybody uh, talk about using that. So that's really cool. I want to bring Charlotte back into the conversation because <laughs> Charlotte's here still. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is interesting. It is. <laughs> this, we're getting into uh, yeah nerdy um, composing <laughs> composing talk now. Um, no, but... I've uh, been at his apartment before while we've been writing stuff, and I'll mm -hmm. see him like fan everything out and start moving things individually. And I am super like not technologically savvy, and <laughs> it feels like I'm in an episode of Star Trek when I'm watching him do it. I'm like, wow! I'm like, nice. you just moved that, and it like did different things. Cool. <laughs> cool all right well so the in general in terms of where we're at like matt you're 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 really kind of yeah you're composing you're making the music you're making a, a full demo and i guess you know doing the main legwork for composing a piece of music um i guess at some point then you are getting it into a form which you then show to charlotte and and i guess the rest of the band um so charlotte what what is it like when matt comes to you with an idea and where does it go typically from there um, sometimes he'll send me like a snippet, like a, a 30 second to 60 second, um, piece before he finishes the whole song. And sometimes I hear it before the rest of the band, but then sometimes it'll just go, we have a discord server that all of us kind of communicate in and we have a special place for song ideas. And, um, so sometimes it'll go in there, but, um, we'll tell him like, yeah, we think you should finish this one. This one feels like really strong. Or sometimes we're like, yeah, I'm not not vibing with this kind of thing. But most of the time we like what Matt comes up with. And so then I'll get the whole track. And <laughs> my writing process is sort of uh, bizarre, I guess, because uh, I will come into my room here. I put on headphones, I block everything else out, and I'll listen to the track by myself like several times with my eyes closed. And I try to visualize what I think the song would be about like what it makes me think about. Mm -hmm. So it's like a very organic thing. And like, it's, it's very interesting because most of the time I don't go in with any like preconceptions of what I'm going to write about. Marionette just came, like, for example, came out of nowhere. I don't, I don't even know why <laughs> when I was listening to that song, I started thinking about marionettes. It just, <laughs> it just kind of happened. And so yeah. And so then I'll start writing it and then I'll send Matt a sample. Like, this is what I was kind of coming up with. And sometimes he'll be like, mm, this is not what I was picturing at all. I'm like, okay, but picture this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. And nice. so I am uh, not technologically savvy. I do have my own recording booth that we've built uh, in our house, which is amazing because then I don't have to rent studio time every time I'm recording something. Mm -hmm. But, um, I know that there are like choir programs and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm very old school. I, I write all of the harmonies and all the choir parts myself and I record each one individually and stack them on top of each other. Nice. Uh, for Marionette, the chorus itself is five part harmony um, until it gets to the end. Then I add a couple extra parts, but then like the, the bridge part is actually nine different parts. And so wow. sometimes that can get really, 
really time consuming, but it also like <laughs> my poor computer doesn't know what to do with it. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. once I'm like stacking, you know, like 25 different <laughs> uh-huh. tracks on top of each other. Yeah. But yeah, okay. that's, that's pretty much my writing process. Matt sends me something and I just, I just write what, what it tells me to write. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. The real, like just proper, proper flow state stuff, you know, like where you just get into the, um, in, in, into the right, you know, state, I suppose. And then, and then it comes down to you through the ethers. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I like that. It's, you know, the, the intuitive approach. Mm-hmm. We've kind of learned over time, like the best way <clears throat> to like work with each other and, and expedite the songwriting process. And uh, so what I will usually do is I'll, I'll write the chorus first um, instead of um, write like an intro and then, you know, be very linear with the songwriting. I usually want to focus the energy on the chorus first, because that's obviously mm-hmm. the most important part. That's what people are going to resonate with. Um, and that, and that's what we've learned over time that works best for us. And, um, and that's something that as a composer, I feel like I should have known when I first started, because I Mm -hmm. I think that by centering the idea around the chorus, the rest of the song can be built off of that. And, Mm -hmm. and then that's where you can get an idea. Cause I think things become like really convoluted and weird when, when you don't approach it that way. Um, and it's just, this is how I work, but, um, for me and the rest of the, the the writing process, things just seem to go easier after that has been taken care of. Mm, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's pretty, <clears throat> pretty cool way to think about it. Really. I, I just suppose that that would be most practical most times. And as you say, in terms of you guys, like you putting an idea in and everybody hearing it, it's like, well, you could put a riff in and it's like, okay, cool yep. riff, <laughs> yep. you know, yep. I guess that could go somewhere, but yeah, I suppose if you, if you really give a chorus then it's like, does this resonate with you? Should this be a song? So yeah, yep. it makes a lot of sense. Mm. Nice. And you, you mentioned about writing melodies and stuff as well. So how does this kind of break down? Like you, you've written a chorus, let's say. Um, Mm -hmm. would you, would you dictate the melody in a certain way? And then Charlotte is working off of that or no, no, I, I, yeah. So in, in the beginning, um, I was doing all of that. Um, and I had, so I, I mentioned growth before as a, as an artist and just a collaborator. Um, it's really easy to get married to ideas. Um, Mm -hmm. and sometimes your ideas aren't good, you know, let's Mm -hmm. be real. Like, you know, sometimes it takes more than one person to write a song. And, um, I, I would in the, in the beginning try to write vocal melodies, but Charlotte is so good. (laughs) I don't need to do that anymore. So what I, so what I will do is, uh, I'll, I'll write, let's say a a chorus Mm -hmm. and then I'll, um, do the guitars and the bass and the orchestra, and then maybe some pianos underneath it. Um, but you know, obviously Charlotte provides all the weight for the melody um but i i I also do you know melodic writing in you know the pianos that i do and everything else so um i'm not in control of the vocal melody that's Mm. definitely charlotte and that's where she's that she that's where she shines Mm -hmm. thank you at at the end of the day honestly i would way rather be a (laughs) songwriter than uh than a singer i know it's kind of a funny thing to say i'm kind of an introvert and uh, <laughs> I would love to, in my future life, be the one like behind writing songs for bands and stuff. I love our project okay. and I love performing, but you know, there comes an age when you don't do that anymore. And I'm like, I would love to just be like sitting behind, like writing songs for other bands. Nice. Hey, I we're going to be doing this when we're cool. 80, Charlotte. Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh, if we have know. to walk out on stage on walkers, we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice cool no i like it so it sounds like you guys have really managed to come to a uh, to a good way of living it up um you know so matt you're kind of starting the process with the instrumental and you're in charge of producing and arranging the instruments and then charlotte you're you know you take that and you channel a um you know a melody and a and a and lyrics and 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 the message and then arrange vocals as well which sounds like i mean if you're you know you're stacking choirs having nine parts on uh 
in, in, in a section and things like that, you know, you sounds like you're doing some pretty sophisticated vocal arrangements as well. So you clearly have a, um, you said about not being like technical, I suppose, on the computer front, but I guess musically, um, you know, you have a fairly technical approach with, uh, with what you're doing there with vocals as your instrument, I suppose. Absolutely. If, um, if somebody could teach me how to use computer programs through a song, I'd probably remember it. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Cool. So it's, it's, you're, you're very much in the, in the, uh, the feel way, you know, uh, the music being in tune, like the kind of, uh, empathetic sort of approach rather than the, uh, technical kind of rational computer logic side. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Mm. That is true. Nice. Cool. And so what about the rest of the guys? How do they come into it? Like, I suppose you guys are really um, driving it, I suppose. And and I guess they come in and play their parts. Um, the live band, I suppose, you know. Yeah. Um, so Kevin is our, our lead guitarist and he, he does provide a lot of, um, a lot of input and he's, his guitar skills are so far beyond mine. Like he's on another level. Kevin is, I mean, he, he's he, beyond, beyond his guitar skill though. Like his work ethic is, uh, I, I couldn't ask for a better member and the rest of the, the, our bassist, she's great. And, and Sean, the drummer, they're both excellent, excellent, uh, members of the band. Um, but yeah, it's, we, we usually like, I'll provide that track and then I'm always open, you know, to suggestion. If it's, if some things want to be changed, I'm I'm totally open for it. You know, it's nothing's solidified until it's like, you know, out in the ether. You know, like that's when the song is like actually the song. But um, every member of this band is vital, and they're awesome. Could not be happier. They're talented, and they're just really super great people. Which is yes. I don't know how we manage that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We didn't give up. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you all live locally to each other in the, in the same yep. area. Uh, that's pretty handy. I mean, uh, yep. Roy and I live across state lines, but it doesn't take us too long to get over there. So, Cool. Yeah, cool. You, you were telling me uh, off, off of the recording thus far that there aren't exactly a lot of symphonic metal bands in your area. <laughs> <laughs> there are not not nothing nothing that's active i mean it's they, they're they may be out there but they're not like doing shows and they're definitely not like they don't have the presence that we do um i i feel like portland oregon and the pacific northwest in general are really geared more towards like doom and stoner and death metal and like black metal um but our our style is really not the most prevalent. Mm. I think it's definitely. I would say, I would say more yeah, like ac acoustic stuff. Acoustic <laughs> stuff, yeah. Yeah, like Ed Sheeran is huge here. Okay, yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> nice, cool. Ed Sheeran and Doctor Who that we have behind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> our exports represent. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I mean, we do actually have a restaurant called the Tardis Room, so. Wow. <laughs> nice. Cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I suppose symphonic metal in general, like we, as we were kind of chatting about the other day, um, I guess it's traditionally been much more based in Europe, <laughs> I suppose. And, you know, especially Scandinavia and I guess like Netherlands and things have, uh, have quite a few. And, um, but it seems to kind of be picking up more and more in the U S um, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, for you guys, I suppose it's, it's hard if you're not seeing that in your area. <laughs> I suppose it's um, I suppose you're not part of any kind of scene, I guess. So, um. not in, not in particular, no. Um, although, like bands like Within Temptation are very very popular mm. out here. It's just bands. There's no bands that are like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's 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 unfortunate, but also it's it's kind of cool um that we're, mm -hmm. we kind of stand on our own and we're not you know doing something that's totally in the scene um we definitely stand on our own in terms of sound and image um i think we're very unique in a good way not in a mm -hmm. you know not in a bad way 
<laughs> yeah, I'm on, the, so. <laughs> on the yeah. right side of things, we are on the West Coast, and while our our favorite genre isn't exactly popular, exactly right where we are, we're not very far from LA. We're not very far from Seattle. We're kind of in the middle of the two, and you know, even San Jose in California, they see a lot of uh, traffic come through, and honestly, <laughs> like. Even the bigger bands like Camelot, they're doing a North American tour. They're totally skipping mm. Portland. They are going uh. to San Jose and they are going to Seattle. I'm going, going up to mm. Seattle to see them. And I've, I've done that for a number of bands where I'll go up and, and see them play in Seattle and then come and or I'll go down to San Jose and see them. So it's not like we're too far. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if I'm if I can travel that distance to see people, we can definitely travel that distance to play. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. And I mean, so I, I guess, yeah. Is that your, is that your focus now? Like you are, you obviously just have released the EP, um, you know, in terms of what you guys are doing and focusing going on forwards, I assume mm-hmm. probably working on more music and, and getting more yes. into the live side of things. Yeah, we are uh, working on a lot of new music. Um, I feel really confident about the new stuff and I, I'm, I'm really excited to actually share that when it's, when it's all done. Um, but we are working really hard at getting live shows booked, um, working with promoters. Um, ultimately we would like to, you know, be represented by a label, um, you know, to help with a lot of that. And it's just a stepping, you know, it's like baby steps and we are just working very dil- diligently and aggressively to try to get there. And I think we're going to, um, cause we're all very motivated people and, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really stoked. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I believe in it. I can see you, see your guys drive and you've got everything together. Um, it's all very professional. You guys make great music. So yeah, I'm I'm rooting for you all the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to I would like to you know uh, change the change the pace a little bit and um, just get a little bit more context on you guys, um, I suppose individually, um, and just a little bit more of your background because you kind of alluded to a few things and I'm really intrigued. Um, I suppose perhaps Charlotte, we can start with you um, in terms of when did you like first get into music uh like you said about singing you know when you were quite young like unbroken voice and things like that so i'm really curious what your entry point was and how you went from there all the way to where you are now <laughs> so it's it's <laughs> it's an interesting road i started off as a, a pageant child <laughs> unfortunately oh wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i have been performing since i was about 6 years old and I was in the fluffy tutus with my hair done up with like the ridiculous makeup and everything saying my fair share of Dolly Parton songs because country is actually really big out here. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of where I started. And um, when I was, they won't actually start doing, so I was trained by my, my grandmother. She always wanted to be a singer, doesn't have like a great voice, but she's, she had a great ear. Um, and so she worked with me and they like around here, they no um, professional vocal instructors will see you until you're at least 10, I think was the age was 10 or 12. And so she trained me until I was able to get like a private voice instructor. And even still, even though you're paying them, you still have to audition for them. And uh, <laughs> so I auditioned and I was accepted and kind of went from there. I worked at a roadhouse, uh, like a steakhouse out here, singing country on the weekends, uh, got paid in, in a little bit, but mostly in food and tips. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then from there, I actually started working with a legends band and uh, did uh, Patsy Cline impersonations for a long time. Wow. So yeah, lots of lots of little weird things. But the whole time I was going through my classical training, um, I trained in coloratura and uh, did a, just a lot of classical stuff there. Um, Some Carmen uh, for a competition, just things like that, Carmenia. Yeah. But um, it wasn't until I kind of hit the end of high school and going into college, I got really into jazz music. And so wow. that's where... 
I think the the writing vocals kind of came from. And especially in that situation where it's all improvisation, that's that's kind of how I learned to come up with things more organically because it's just you, usually a three-piece band, and you just have to sing whatever comes to you like in the moment. Sometimes it's really bad. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's amazing. And then I ended up actually been teaching a vocal improvisational workshop at Clark College. And because apparently I was doing pretty well with that. And so that's where kind of the composition side came from. But is uh, as I was growing up with my Nana and learning classical music and, you know, listening to the Beatles and <laughs> Connie Francis and all of her, her older artists, um, I kind of got into Mariah Carey on my own. But uh, when I would spend time with my mom, who was very young, actually, uh, she was 16 when she had me. So I didn't spend the bulk of my childhood, you know, with her, it was more with my Nana. But um, when I would hang out with her, we would listen to like ACDC and Metallica okay. and Slayer. <laughs> and so nice. and I had that whole other, you know, aspect of things. But as far as like this genre, I remember the gateway kind of being the first time I ever heard the um, SNN album from Metallica, you know, Metallica yeah. and Vinny. And it was the first time something in my mind kind of clicked where I was like, oh my gosh, like this is beautiful and it's heavy, you know? And then mm -hmm. um, I, one of my exes, he, he got really into uh, Epica, like he just loved them. And then I was like, oh my gosh, people that have a voice like mine can sing like this kind of music because I like not to sound it's it's not a conceited thing but i have a very pretty voice it's not it's not edgy it's not cool it's just it's very clean and pure so i just never thought that i could even get in to like heavy like cool music and uh but then that kind of changed everything and then of course you know, from there i learned about nightwish and within temptation and then just like really fell in love with camelot and uh yeah i guess the rest is kind of history from there that's amazing yeah, wow a long road weird road <laughs> yeah i mean that's quite a quite a broad depth you know at one at one point i was like wow so you were pretty well versed in country classical mm -hmm. and then obviously metal at some point these are three quite distinct things and then you were like and then i got into jazz and i'm like wow you're covering pretty much everything now <laughs> The funny thing yeah. is, is, I think even to to this day, as much as I love the the genre that we're doing, uh, jazz is still my strongest suit. Like my wow. voice just resonates there in a way that it doesn't in other genres for some reason. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's not it's not where my heart is, but it's definitely where my voice is. <laughs> That's interesting. And how yeah. do you feel about the yeah. other music in general? Do you still enjoy country music, or does it give you like? <laughs> nightmares <laughs> oh, uh, no no yeah. i i still enjoy everything um country is one of those things i like older country uh more than like modern day like if i'm going to listen to it, i'm more likely to throw out a merle haggard album than i am oh gosh i don't know <laughs> easy musgraves is a, is a country person <laughs> yeah. right um, so uh -huh. <laughs> i definitely like old school stuff more um but then I'm also still like a basic white woman and I love Taylor Swift. So there's that. <laughs> like, cool. Fair dues. Yeah, and so you, uh, uh, I've definitely made Matt sit through me singing uh, Taylor Swift at karaoke. So <laughs> I didn't hate it. <laughs> I made you sit through me singing Bobby Brown. So <laughs> I know, yeah. it was amazing. <laughs> nice. So, wow. Touche. <laughs> yeah. Really cool though. Really cool to it to hear about your um background it's it's yeah unique one for sure especially like the pageantry and, and things like that that's uh you know quite unique i haven't heard i haven't <laughs> spoken to anybody from a background like that so i just yeah. knew i wanted to sing and whatever opportunity was available to me i just went for it whatever mm -hmm. it was that's awesome yeah and so you, you've literally been yeah singing since you were six years old you said but like performing the whole the whole time like wow yeah. <laughs> But you said you said about like um you said unfortunately in regards to the pageantry. Um. Uh, <laughs> that was definitely for my my nana than me. Um okay. I'm definitely I like to get dressed up, but not 
you know, my hair shouldn't be bigger than my head. And, you know, that's not really my, <laughs> not really earlier, my thing. Being very, you're quite introverted and, and, and such. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I feel like yeah. when I perform that, it's almost like kind of an out of body experience. That's, that's no. Charlotte, the performer. That's not like normal Charlotte. I, in, in a group situation, I'm not usually like the center of attention. I'm not one to really start conversation like i'm i'm that weirdo at a party that's like playing with someone's cat or their dog or something (laughs) (laughs) so yeah it's definitely it's definitely like a a whole different person i have to put myself in a different place to to be able to uh be out in front of people i get you i uh i yeah, I, I totally get you. Um, really, really cool, in- interesting story. Uh, there's also some curious about, but I want to kick it back over to Matt. And well, just ask you the same thing, really, Matt. When did you first get into music? And uh, and you, I think you mentioned that you were in some of the bands and things before. So, yeah. Yeah, my my background is definitely not as interesting as Charlotte. I'll just practice it with that. So, and it's going to be much, much shorter. And- <laughs> yeah. No pageants. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Back in the day, I used to have hair like this before. This. <laughs> no. That was uh, just his Halloween costume, though, when he dressed up yeah, as Dolly. Right, exactly. Right. That's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I started listening to music, I think. I mean, I've always been a, a fan of rock and metal, um, but I started wanting to compose it, I think, right around 2006 or 2007. And um, I knew nothing about music. In fact, I, I've never taken a lesson. It's mm-hmm. just been repetition and repetition and lots of really, really bad songs and um, <laughs> learning how to write, um, how to learning how to use logic or you know any kind of DAW, learning how to use my guitar and write pianos. It's just it's been a, a long haul. And um, I, th- I just think just drive and just tenacity got me to where I'm at right now. I'm not saying I'm like a, a great songwriter, but I'm definitely better than I was a year ago or two years ago. Cause I've just been doing it. I, be- I do it every day. I'm, I'm writing something literally every day. Awesome. So, and that, I think that's what it takes, you know, to succeed, even if you have lessons or not, you know, you, you have to have a ton of failures before you can, you know, start you know seeing um progress and success i think Mm -hmm. that's just from my personal point of view um but i've um i've always loved uh rock and metal like i said i started getting into symphonic metal um i when i i was in the army i was stationed in germany um in 2003 2004 Um, and there's a lot of European bands that I was exposed to. And I think that's like shaped and shifted my, my interest. I think one of my first bands that I was uh, introduced to was, um, well, Dimu and, um, old man's child and a lot of, a lot of bands from Norway. And I just kind of fell in love with the, the, the symphonic metal, dark, dark symphonic metal sound. I, 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 it just resonates with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of where I wanted to be. I, I, I kind of like idolized these composers, um, like Peter Tadgren from hypocrisy and, uh, Galder and Silenos from Demu and stuff like that. these guys are like my, my core inspiration for, um, my compositions and how I like, you know, present myself on stage too. you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely character based and stuff, but, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my my history, I suppose, just, um, I've, I've been in a couple of bands, but mostly it's been sitting behind a keyboard and recording and logic. And then mm-hmm. finally, this band is the one that really is, um, the most serious and, and doing something. So mm-hmm. that's, that's pretty much where I'm, where I'm at. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm producing other genres of music too. I, I, I like to write pop and EDM. Um, cause I think it's, it's also nice to like diversify the mind and not get, you know, stuck on one thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I just in general, I love writing and I love that creative process. And I like seeing something finished, you know, from like just a, 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 a generic riff idea. And then it becomes a full project, a really great track, you know, that's what mm-hmm. I, I appreciate the 
the most about um, the creative process and, and composition. So, I love that, man. I think that yeah, that's that's really cool. That's really interesting. And you, the thing, one thing that you said was about well, it seemed from your story as if you were really drawn to writing specifically, mm-hmm. and so you wanted to write music, and and then got into playing music and, and practicing all of these different things that go into writing, producing, et cetera. Were you, yeah. were you playing instruments before that at all or? No, no, it was one of those things. I just kind of, uh, decided to just pick up and just start doing it. And, then, uh, I, I, in the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, in the beginning, I used guitar pro uh, as a, nice. uh, yeah. as a, as a tool for composition. And I, I really wish I could get my hands on, some of my earliest work just so I could just like laugh at myself, you know, just the, you know, cause it was probably just the worst, the worst stuff ever. But I, yeah. So you were literally I, I know, like going in blind, like, like yeah, you just got yeah, guitar exactly. pro and were like, I'm just going to click some stuff and yep. make some music. Yep. There, there cool. was no, I had no idea. I had, I didn't know what a scale <laughs> was. I didn't know what, you know, keys were. I didn't know and you even, didn't even like know what a triad guitar. was didn't know how to play guitar and I was wow. learning, I was learning how to play. I, I learned how to play guitar by, you know, using guitar pro and learning other people's songs. And then yeah. that kind of built like a, a rudimentary knowledge base on songs and stuff like that. But even still, like it just took tons of time. Wow. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty interesting and, and quite unique story. I would say like, I know a lot of, I know people now that still compose on guitar pro some really great composers actually. Um, but often, you know, people maybe start like playing guitar or whatever when they're a kid and they kind of like build in and then use guitar for whatever. I'd, I don't think I've ever heard it before where you, somebody like you'd like decided I'm going to write songs, you know, even without playing instruments and stuff and then just go and pick all of it up. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it, it was just grind. one of those things. <laughs> yeah. It was the grind. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, everybody's got their own way of learning. You know, I, I still mm-hmm. use Guitar Pro to this day um, just for reference um, for like my bassist or our bassist, Roya. Um, she um, she has an interesting way of noting the notes in like a notebook. Um, but I'm, I'm also trying to use Guitar Pro to like, you know, give that visual and audio feedback. That way mm-hmm. um, you can learn songs quicker, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. That and it's it just gives you that feedback, um, and it it just helps. I don't use it primarily for anything anymore, other than just like reference tools for yeah, either myself coming back to that riff, mm. or for the rest of the band to like this is how it how it is according to the logic file. Mm. Cool. Wow. So so that's interesting. So so you were just a music fan before that, basically. Like rock, pretty much. You said you always liked rock and metal. And yep. then it was this time in the army that you were stationed in Germany. And so that's, I guess, when music started, I don't know, hitting you on a deeper level or especially this kind of dark symphonic music that you were exposed yeah. to at that time. Yeah, I think a lot of it, it might've been, it might've been boredom, you know, sitting in <laughs> barracks and not doing anything. And uh, I, sure. I, I had a, a really crappy laptop and then I had like Guitar Pro 4, whatever, Mm. Um, and it just was, it started off just, you know, with a crappy little guitar and guitar pro, and that's how it just kind of evolved. Mm. And then it really wasn't until I got out of the military and invested in like an iMac and some cheap East West symphonic software and, Mm. you know, some basic recording gear. And at that time, I still didn't even know what I was doing, like with Mm. recording, it was a lot of a lot of headache trying to figure things out um mm. but it just takes time you have to start somewhere mm-hmm. that's cool that's cool and i kind of like a little bit of a parallel that if that's when you've started then sort of a bit bored in these barracks on the, on the little laptop and then you know if you fast forward then it was like the lockdown when this band was yeah born. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Like it was circle. exactly <laughs> like that it, it definitely full circle all of the <laughs> venues in portland were shut down um the there wasn't any bands doing anything you know so i i actually kind of used it was it was kind of a blessing in disguise because i used the, the pandemic to uh, learn more and um just create more and Mm -hmm. kind of focus on what i really wanted out of music and where i wanted to be and 
um, the sound that, that we have is where I want to be, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like a professional act, like this is what I want. Um, but yeah, it, it's blessing in disguise. It was unfortunate because we couldn't, my previous band had to quit because everything was shut down. The rehearsal studio that we were at, you know, shut down. People just kind of, you know, uh, dispersed and were not interested in playing anymore after that. So it was really just me. Um, but yeah, no, I'm super thrilled about, you know, where things have gone in the last few years. And um, I think everybody else is too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, as well, you, you mentioned about doing some other kind of music. Are you releasing any stuff or is that just kind of for fun? Oh, no. Um, well, the, the pop and EDM stuff, I'm actually uh, working with the, the singer from Anaria, Jessica. Uh, her and All I are right. going to be doing some uh, pop tracks and everything. I have like eight songs done. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. Uh, I want to do, I, I want to do four more. Uh, that way we have like, like a, a whole, whole year's album. worth of, uh, I'm not trying to yeah. plug this project that I'm yeah. in right now, sure, but, no, I'm um, just curious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, the, the idea is, um, we're going to have like a year's worth of release and we're just going to release a song every month. Things have been busy mm. in, in, in her camp. Um, but hopefully soon we'll be able to start releasing that stuff. Um, but our music in general, um, we have a lot and we're just trying to, kind of be strategic with how, what we want to release. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be releasing um, a re-release of The Heart Remains. <clears throat> okay, and cool. uh, that's going to be a remix, remaster. Um, I also recomposed the song in an acoustic version, um, which is wonderfully done. Charlotte did an amazing job on the vocals on that track because it's a lot more somber and um, it's just uh, acoustic guitar, piano, and bass. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely more stripped down and more intimate, I think, mm -hmm. uh, really excited about that. Um, so that's, that's coming in the pipeline. Um, that'll be the next release date. We, that's to be determined. I think what we're focused right now on is the, the video when we want to release mm -hmm. that and what we want to do with it. So mm. stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> we got some good stuff coming up. Uh, ju just out of curiosity as well. Um, I'm not sure. I probably did a look at your credits but are you are you mixing your music as well mixing mastering doing that sort of things or i was and then uh sergio the guitarist of anaria um he's doing the mixing and the mastering for now but mm -hmm. um i think i'm gonna take over the mixing for the album um he's wow. he him and i have been working together um kind of he's teaching me a lot of a lot of cool new tricks and everything and i think just for my own um, ability as a producer, I I, I want to have that that extra knowledge base so I can I can do at least the mixing side and then the mastering can be done you know by some other party. Mm -hmm. Sergio oh, really yeah. is like the sixth member of the band. <laughs> nice. He really is. He really yeah. is. You really yeah. have an affinity then with Adaria, right? By the sounds of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are the they're great band. people. <laughs> they are great, great people. They're from New Hampshire. And um, I actually met him on Facebook on some symphonic metal group. I, I think I reached out on this forum and I just asked like, hey, just wondering like if anybody wants to collaborate on something. I can't remember the exact post, but uh, he reached out and then we started working together and the the funny thing about marionette is that song was originally supposed to be me and sergio's song and then he got really busy with something and life got in the way and um it just kind of sat there and i'm like you know what this i have these tracks that i wrote for him and they're not doing anything so i'm just going to use them as terminal dust song so i pitched it and then that's how uh, marionette was born right. and it, it cool. yeah so it was kind of an interesting backstory with um uh, marionette at least and i attached to it right away i fell in love with that song right away <laughs> perfect yeah it was meant to be <laughs> it was meant to be it was really meant to be and then you know talking about the video that we did for it like charlotte crafted uh amazing lyrics but then the visual component she also had this vision for this this video mm -hmm. and it, it it's just it's it, it's incredible like the marriage between the two i mean we, we hired a stilt walker for the, nice. for the video and he was puppet back master, there. He yeah. was like the puppet master. 
And like, it, it's just so haunting because like we were in this, like our, our guitarist works for a, a Ducati and um, they, they allowed us to use a, a sister warehouse had to shoot the video in. And it was like, honestly, it was like, hundred degrees Fahrenheit in there yeah. and probably more. It was so hot. <laughs> and but it was oh. so cool because it was a really warehouse vibes and the lighting and everything was just haunting. Um it it was the coolest experience I think just those two days. And when he says I craft the visuals like I literally crafted the yes. visuals. Like I handmade so oh. many of the props. <laughs> Oh, wow. literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Nice. Like, <sighs> wow. So you make, yeah, cool. So you just have an all round creative approach then, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely like a very um, artsy person is, is overused and cheesy as that sounds, but yeah. Oh, sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds cool. I mean, I'm not hand making any props. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. It was, it was funny. definitely, I loved your word choice. It was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Props. <laughs> you no, know, here, like she can't, she crafted this whole thing. I'm like, damn straight. I did. <laughs> yeah. You're damn straight. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. It's an, it's addicting actually, um, doing music videos and, and Sergio is like, I, I'm just warning you, this is going to be addicting. And he was right. Like, I'm like excited for our next project and our next big photo <laughs> shoot and everything. Cause it's, it's oh, fun to get all man. glammed up and go and look evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't look nice. evil. We looked cool. <laughs> yeah, we look cool. Some of those pictures look really dark, and I love that the atmosphere, the lighting, and the fog. Beautiful, yeah. be- beautifully mm-hmm. done. That's it. Yeah, yeah. As as I said earlier on, like it's it's a great presentation of you guys. Um, the way they had it in the in in the press back or whatever. I don't know if everyone's seeing that, but soon enough, everyone will see the video and everything and. Yeah, it, it looks fantastic. It's a great vibe. Thank it's you. The music, really, really well. Uh, yeah, I super. Yeah, love it a lot. Um, I think uh, you know. Obviously, we've been speaking for a little while now. Um, I'm, I'm sure that you guys are rather busy. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm curious. Like, the, especially with two of you here, there's loads that I feel that we could talk about. I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, both both of you guys have a lot of interesting things going on. Um, Perhaps, you know, before we wrap up, I, I, maybe just to cover a little bit of ground, I'd love to, but each of you individually, I'd be curious to know something or maybe some things that you're super into outside of music. How about you, Charlotte? <laughs> you clearly have a lot of cool interests going on, like considering your yeah, arts my, and crafts uh, background. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where we are. I'm like, I have my anime wall scrolls here. I've got my video game and anime figures. I've got my sewing machine over there. Yeah, I just, that's amazing. My, my curtains, I actually made them as well. Yeah, incredible. Just, yeah. That's, that's, that's me. I'm very, I'm a very hands on, very, uh, I love to create things. I'm just a creative person. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, I don't have a lot of time for, for it anymore. I have an almost four year old. He'll be four in a couple months. And Aww. that's the majority of my time sink. And a lot of the mm-hmm. times when I'm working on our music and stuff, uh, Matt and I were just talking about this the other day. I put him to bed. I go hang out with my husband for a little bit. And then I'm up until like two or three in the morning working wow. on stuff. And then I'm up at seven 30 again with, with the kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's pretty much my existence right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I do a lot more video gaming these days than uh, anime viewing, but there was one thing I was thinking about uh, that I didn't mention. There is a, an anime slash video game composer in Japan whose name is Yuki Kajiura. Mm. And uh, she is a phenomenal vocal, like she's a great composer in general, but I love the vocals, the dissonance and like the, she does the kind of round sort of thing where people aren't singing the same things at the same time. Like they're singing different, completely different parts, sometimes completely different lyrics and Mm. kind of the back and forth conversational type harmonies. And a lot of that kind of shines through in the way that I write. There are so many times when I write things and I'm, I would hope that she would write it (laughs) in a similar way. I get you. So a big inspiration for you. Yeah, absolutely. And like, who, who would have thought that like 
this anime music that I was listening to, particularly when in my teenage years, uh-huh. which translates so much to what I'm doing as like a grown ass adult. <laughs> so, Amazing. Yeah. You and know. you said you said you're a big Camelot fan as well. So I suppose mm-hmm. that that like operas and this kind of thing with the with the dialogue and the fugal kind of melodies, as you say, I suppose is is an interest of yours then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say Camelot actually has a lot of similar qualities to Yuki mm-hmm. and that's maybe why it was so drawn to them mm-hmm. because as far as like uh vocals i i couldn't be more different from like roy or tommy they tommy's got a, a much brighter tone for sure and but they each have this kind of brooding like slow vibrato very dramatic uh performance style about them where i think i'm definitely way more similar to like simone simmons we mm-hmm. have pretty identical like types of voices I'm definitely not as as good as Simone Simmons, but I think on a on a base level, mm-hmm. we're very similar. But I'm definitely more drawn to like the darker, deeper, and like you know, just more mm-hmm. more brooding sounds. I guess. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but then I listen to anime music, which is like the polar opposite. The opposite. There yeah, you yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and then in karaoke, she'll go and perform something in Japanese. Amazing. <laughs> it's pretty like incredible an song. <laughs> yeah i you actually won Japanese a pretty song. big uh competition at anime expo back in the day where wow. i got to perform for like a pretty big like japanese music producer and and things like that so that's wow. that's definitely a lifelong love of mine as well <laughs> It's so cool. It's just like its whole own thing. I mean, again, considering (laughs) these huge different areas of music you've worked in, that's a completely different one. You know, that's quite, quite I've never written any Japanese music, though, I will say that. I'm not fluent enough to write in Japanese. But I suppose if you listen, if you listen to so much of the music, I guess you can sing along with some of your favorites. So yeah, that's nice. (laughs) I mean, I, I I don't know if you're familiar with like I, I can't say I've listened to a lot of anime music, but there is one particular composer that I've listened to so 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 much, um, which is a composer called Yoko Kano. And oh she did... yeah, Cowboy Bebop and the seatbelt. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen to the seatbelts, all of that Cowboy Bebop music, especially. I listen to that so much, like over the years. It's on all the time. Yeah, I absolutely love it. <laughs> so the song Cats on Mars, for some uh, reason, is something that I just sing around my house all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just like awesome. always. Yeah, so Yoko so Kano, cool. I love her. Yes, absolutely. That's so cool. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and that's cool because I can't say that I meet a lot of people that even know who she is. So, you know, that's something. <laughs> Which is kind of a shame. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because sure. um, I don't know if you're very familiar. <clears throat> like, I know Cowboy Bebop's the iconic one, but she did a lot of music for Ghost in the Shell, yeah, especially that was the, the other m- main one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then Orga, the the Russian mm-hmm. singer who unfortunately is no longer yeah. with us, but the stuff that they worked on together is just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, I love all of that stuff. Yeah, I like the cowboy um sorry, the ghost in the shell ones too. Those those ones always kind of came together for me because like in the middle of the night on TV or whatever, the, like those were the animes that they always had, Cowboy Bebop and Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> so that was my main relationship to uh to anime. And yeah, those soundtracks always stuck with me, man. Yeah, lots of right, great well, songs. And so Moon. eclectic. Right. Sailor mm-hmm. Moon was my gateway drug. So you know the, the you. cartoon network stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Nice. <laughs> Very, very cool. Let's kick it back. Uh, let's kick it back over to Matt. And um, you've had some time to think. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, <laughs> yeah, no, I got plenty. Of, yeah. So living in the Pacific Northwest, I'm, I'm really big into uh, hiking and backpacking and stuff. Living out awesome. here is we have so much nature that, I mean, you can spend That's a great. lifetime, you know, exploring and, and finding new things. And we are kind of blessed, actually, because I'm originally from uh, Minnesota and North Dakota, which are very flat, at least the part of Minnesota that I grew up in. So when I first moved out here in 2016, um, it was a, a bit of a, a revolution. It revolutionized like like who I am as a person. I, I, I wasn't really into like outdoors before moving out here, um, seeing the mountains and seeing the waterfalls really made me want to be more part of nature. Um, and I tried to the best of my ability to go out and do things, you know, especially in the summertime out here, it's just beautiful. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I love running. I love my cats. Um, I have two cats and, um, um, I'm actually going to be, uh, running hood to coast, uh, running from the top of Mount hood to the ocean. It's, um, yeah. So it's, that's going to be a big thing later on this month. Um, but yeah. well, is that like a marathon or something? Or? It's like a marathon. Yeah. It's like a team of 12 people. Um, and you're in a van and you do relays and, um, oh. it's, it's hundred, I don't know how many miles it is total. I think it's like 130 or 140 miles, but, um, yeah, it's, oh. it's going to be my first time doing that. And but you're, um, but you're running a, a, like a section of that with the relay team. You're not yeah, you, I think you're, miles. No, you, you're assigned <laughs> like particular like likes, I guess. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, and then okay, you do yeah. that and then it's like relayed from there. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, usually I like to just be outside in the summertime because come the winter, it, it's, it rains like eight months, uh-huh. nine months out of the year, <laughs> you know? So it's, 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 it's pretty crucial to get out and get some sun because I think a lot of people here are vitamin D depleted, myself yeah, yeah. included, so I need sun. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's beyond composing. I, I, I just, um, I love nature. I love cats and I like running and that's, uh, travel, nice. all that good stuff. Yeah. That's good. Hey, man. That's good. I love how polar opposite we are. He asked us about, yeah. like, I can stay in and play video games. Yeah. You're like, yeah. I can be yeah. outside and run. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It's, you know, you guys are, uh, you, equal each other you know uh, as collaborative <laughs> partners so it's, yep. it's nice it's a nice balance yeah. i was gonna I, jokingly i was gonna pitch the idea as a band we go like like skydive as a band but i i have a feeling charlotte's <laughs> gonna say no <laughs> yeah, yeah i bet you anything it'll be it'll, it would only be me and kevin i bet you anything <laughs> yeah. i don't know ryan might go for it do you think so <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Sean would, because you know we no. we're the only two that have kids, so we want to yeah. live for our children. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> what about oh, your cats? Yeah. Out. Who will they have? Nice. We can go with Rosemary. <laughs> that's true. Nice. That's cool. But so an active lifestyle, though, I, I like that, and I guess you have a background in military and things like that as well. So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's that's cool man i i i like that you know it's it's good um yeah good like i guess you you know maintain a discipline like that and you said as well like you compose every day and such so you know i think uh, that's probably a big part of it i think mm-hmm. i think that mentality stuck with me over these years and everything just with discipline on on every aspect of my life for the most part um whether I, whether I, you know, um, recognize it or not, I think it's always going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a good thing. It's a good yeah, thing to sure. have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, man. And I mean, it's definitely like a, a very traditional composer approach, you know, to compose and walk in nature. That's what all of the the great classical composers, that was their life, you know, <laughs> composing yeah. and then they, and then they take to the hills walk in nature you know that was, and that was it that's the good life <laughs> it's a it's a good way it's a good way though to uh decompress and just you know mm-hmm. commune with nature i think you know with with today's lifestyle everything is so fast and you know i i, I feel like you know getting away from social media is mm-hmm. re- imperative you know for you know at least a day or two and you know then and then coming back is fine but i like to just go and reset yeah. Being out in the mountains is like my reset. Mm-hmm. And so do you get to do it so much when it's raining and it's like cold and dark in winter? <laughs> I, I still do. Uh, but it's, it's hard. It's hard getting up to some areas because of the, the snow. Like it rains down mm-hmm. here in, in, in the valley. But, you know, obviously when you get up, you know, three, four, five thousand feet, you know, you're, you're dealing with a ton of, ton of snow. But I have mm-hmm. a, I have a pretty cool Jeep. I can get through some. Nice. Early snow, but uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun being out here any time of the year. Yeah, cool, man. Cool, nice. I I love I love the contrast. <laughs> really we great. we are very different people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we were very similar, but we're also very different. Yeah, exactly. Our, our humor yeah. is similar. I think is really yeah. cool. <laughs> and we have similar work ethic. I would say. Yes. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah. definitely. 
No, it's it's great. I mean, yeah, again, like you, you know, you complement each other in that way, and you can bring different things to the project. And the fact that you guys have grown into the sort of trust you have with each other and working working yeah. together, like it seems to be blossoming just you know perfectly for you guys. As a I'm band. really happy with that. You know, I think you know in the beginning, like I was mentioning before, you know, it was all it was all me. So sometimes, like you get married to ideas, and Charlotte yeah. taught me, you know, that you know, it's teamwork is very important. And, um, I'm, I'm really happy with that progress and where I'm at and who I've become, you know, as mm -hmm. a, as a team member and a, you know, bandmate and stuff like that. Oh, and, and a friend, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we've gotten there. I'm, okay. I'm kind of a, a not going skydiving person. <laughs> not yeah, skydiving. <laughs> I know that there was one time where he said we were friends. I'm like, Matt, we're not friends. We're bandmates. And I think he never really let me live that down. And that's why he, he does that. And I was like, I, I think we're friends. I'm like, no, at this point, yes, I would agree with you. <laughs> okay. Good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's cool. Cool. Is there anything else in particular that you guys would uh, would like to chat about or get in there? Yeah, I um, just keep a lookout for the new video. Um, we'll definitely be dropping a bunch of hints when that gets closer. We're, we're also, like I mentioned before, re-releasing The Heart Remains and its acoustic version as well, uh, which we are definitely excited about. And Sergio is going to be doing the mixing and mastering on that on those and um yeah we're just booking shows left and right and, and um hope we can see y'all soon <laughs> cool cool well thank you guys so much it's it's really thank you. such a pleasure again to chat with you both and uh yeah as as matt has said obviously you know encourage everybody to go check the band out um and yeah you know all of the details will be included in the episode so thank you guys and uh yeah thank I, you i look forward to uh touch thank basic. you so much for you having us soon. <laughs> yes thank you so much thank you for listening to this episode of creating a universe a special thank you to charlotte and matt from terminal dusk for joining me i really enjoyed this one be sure to check out the band at terminaldusk.com links will be in the show notes that's all for this one i'll see you next time